I am continuing my video series on Goddess Columbia in America. This is part 2 of the series. If you feel like you've missed anything, check out the previous video, the link is in the description. I recommend watching it to get the full picture. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. In the previous video, I explored how, despite America's widespread belief in its Christian foundations, the nation's government buildings are adorned with symbolism that tells a different story. Instead of Christ or monotheistic themes, these structures often feature a goddess named Columbia, who holds a prominent place in the nation's iconography. Columbia, a figure frequently depicted with one arm raised and a torch in hand, is seen across the United States, from the Capitol in Washington, D.C., to state capitals and various public monuments. This is not a coincidence. The United States is filled with representations of Columbia, who is sometimes renamed as Lady Liberty, Miss Freedom, or the Goddess of Liberty. However, these are all variations of the same figure, and the recurring presence of this goddess raises questions about the true spiritual and ideological underpinnings of America. The buildings that house the nation's government, the very seat of its power, are crowned with symbols that have more in common with ancient polytheistic traditions than with the monotheistic Christian values that many Americans believe their country is built upon. For example, the figure of Miss Freedom atop the Georgia State Capitol wears a Phrygian cap, holds a torch, and wields a sword, elements that are strikingly similar to Columbia's iconography. In the Massachusetts Capitol, Columbia is depicted in a mural honoring fallen soldiers, again with the characteristic upward stretched arm. This same figure appears atop the Memorial Hall in Philadelphia and the State Capitol of Maine, among other locations. What's fascinating is how the names of these figures have been altered over time, perhaps to downplay the goddess's influence or to obscure the original intent behind these symbols. Whether it's the Lady of Wisdom in Maine or the Spirit of the Commonwealth in Pennsylvania, these figures all share key elements with Columbia, yet are often referred to by other names. Even the old State House of Connecticut was once topped by a figure known as the Genius of Connecticut, which, despite its name, was a representation of a goddess or spirit. In essence, while the U.S. proclaims a separation of religion and state, the symbols on its government buildings suggest a deep connection to ancient polytheistic traditions. This disconnect between the spiritual symbols that dominate public architecture and the beliefs of the average American citizen is striking and worthy of further exploration. In today's video, I'll continue this discussion by delving deeper into the history and significance of these symbols and what they reveal about America's true identity. Let's now look into the true identity of Columbia or Lady Liberty and the reason official sources are shy about her. In Washington, D.C., inside of the George Washington Masonic Memorial Building, we find this apron. It's called the Columbia Apron because it shows Columbia ruling above all. Except the all-seeing eye. Official sources claim that Columbia is a variation of Columbus who discovered America. There is no evidence for that. This is a side-by-side -side comparison of Lady Liberty and Goddess Columbia. Yes, that's the logo of Columbia Pictures, one of the first big movie makers of America. One of the first big television channels of America was CBS, Columbia Broadcasting System. Their logo is a single eye. The Statue of Liberty is for, also called the Light Bearer, the Morning Star, Helios, Prometheus, Satan and the Devil. It's common to depict Lucifer with a crown of light, a torch, one hand raised to the heavens. Here's Lucifer in St. Paul's Cathedral, Rome. On this statue, the raised hand is weak and rests on the head, and the leg is chained to the earth. And these are the feet of Lady Liberty at the Statue of Liberty. Now that you've seen the chains, the crown and torch make sense. What they mean by liberty here is the unchaining of Lucifer. The Bible tells us that Lucifer has been kicked out of the higher realm, locked into this realm with his fallen angels. Lucifer tells us another story. He's been oppressed and victimized because he's fighting for our enlightenment. A few years ago, I created this poster and shared it on social media. I titled it Paradoxes of the American Mind. The symbol of the libertarian movement is a snake that says don't tread on me, a rebellion against the biblical verse, I have given you authority to tread on snakes. Does this mean that the libertarian idea, the rebellious impulse, is bad or satanic etc.? Of course not. Whether the liberty ideal is good or bad, depends on whether the ruling class is benevolent. 
It's good to support liberty when the government is corrupt, but less so when government is benevolent. The Bible says that the rebellion of Lucifer was rooted in envy, but pretended to be fighting oppression, similar to communists who also claim to by fighting oppression, but once they gain power, become even more oppressive than the oppressor they were supposedly fighting. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you learned something. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell, so you won't miss any update. Finally, watch until the end to avoid any misunderstanding. Thank you. Columbia equals Lady Liberty equals Lucifer. It's Lucifer sitting atop many government buildings across the US. At the very least, this reveals a deep oblivion in this country. Most of the state capitol buildings in the US follow the dome and column architecture. My guess is, they were not all suddenly planned and built in the late 1800s, as official sources tell us. Based on years of research, I'm sure they were all excavated from a previous civilization. I could be wrong, but my theory right now is that Lucifer was added to the top of buildings after the global revolutionary phase of the late 1700s and early 1800s. I've collected some evidence that these times mark the unchaining and reign of Lucifer. Or, the statues were there all along because America was part of the same kingdom called Rome and Greece today. Here's what I know for certain. Our government and ruling classes cannot be fully comprehended without also understanding the spiritual world. Knowledge dissemination relies on you. Share this video far and wide. Now, it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable and have helped shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.